Hi, and welcome everyone to today's panel discussion about this year's special edition of the Cloud Sessions, Women's Voices. My name is Karin Olofsdotter, and I'm the ambassador of Sweden to the United States. And as Sweden's ambassador, I'm especially thrilled that you are with us today, since this event captures so many of Sweden's core values and priorities, including innovation and creativity, trade and export, and women's representation. Despite the population of just about 10 million people, Sweden in, is an international leader in music. Cultural and creative industries make a growing contribution towards Swedish exports. And today, Sweden is one of the world's most successful exporters of chart music, including to the United States. And many Swedish women artists have reached the top charts of American music industry, including Sarah Larsson, Tuvalu and Icona Pop. We are also a trailblazer in music distribution with companies such as Spotify and SoundCloud, which help spread the songs of artists around the world. But despite the many successful women artists, songwriters and producers in Sweden and the United States, the music industry remains male dominated. And a recent study from the University of Southern California of the songs on Billboard's year-end Hot 100 chart found that women represented only about 20% of the performing artists of last year's top songs, and less than 13% of the credited songwriters, and just 2% of producers for the top 100 hits were women. That is why an initiative like the Cloud Sessions Women's Voices is so important because it really brings together and supports creative and talented women to create their own music. And there are women out there leading the way. Take Swedish pop rock sensation Robin for an example. She founded Konnichiwa Records in 2005 to cover all aspects of her music career, including media management, recording contracts, and the creative process. Robin also helped establish Tekla, which is a tech festival and workshop that offers girls the opportunity to learn about coding. So with all this in mind, Sweden is proud to support the Cloud Sessions Women's Voices, and we really look forward to the following uh, of all these talented young women, and we can't wait to listen to the music that they will continue to create. Hi everyone, and welcome to today's event. My name is Anka Rimbe, I'm the Consul General of Sweden in New York. And we have panelists joining us from both sides of the Atlantic today and an audience tuning in from all over the world. We're thrilled that this project, which we initiated last year during maybe the hardest months, the most difficult months of the pandemic, is now receiving continued support. And I'm especially excited that this edition of the Cloud Session features 10 female artists, um, producers and songwriters from Sweden, and 10 female students from the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music at NYU Tisch uh, in New York. For two full weeks in March, these women collaborated um, to create new music and some of their songs will be played during today's event. And as mentioned, Sweden is an international leader in music. And in fact, Sweden's capital, Stockholm, uh, has one of the highest numbers of recording studios in per capita in the world. However, of course, this year during the pandemic, um, it has not been possible to bring producers, songers, musicians, together in, in a recording studio. So this entire project, uh, the sessions of, and the collaboration in the cloud session has been done uh, online. But the work, uh, the work showcase such a creativity. And, and it also shows how artists around the world have been able to adapt to the circumstances and to, to uh, the use of new technology. We, and I think we can't stress 
how important music is, and especially in, in times as, as the ones that we have experienced. Music is uh, a universal language, um, which in many ways brings healing and, and, and foster communication. So the embassy and the, the consulate general um, want to thank the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music, the Export Music Sweden, and Today is Vintage for all the good collaboration uh, in organizing the cloud sessions, um, the cloud session events today. Our focus is to build relationships. And in addition to supported talented musicians, I think this project really promotes dialogue and relations um, between the US and Sweden. So with that, I will now only um, leave the word. It's my great honor to, to um, hand it over to Stella Smith from the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music. Um, Stella is a singer-songwriter um, and a music producer from the United States uh, with long, uh, excellent and exciting track record. Um, her song Board from September of 2020 received over 5 million um, views in, in four months on TikTok, as an example. So, um, Stella, over to you. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to the Cloud Sessions Women in Music panel. Thank you to the Embassy of Sweden in Washington DC and the Consulate General of Sweden in New York for helping make this happen. My name is Stella Smythe, I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, the co-founder of Producers Against Misogyny and a sophomore at the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music. We have many incredible women with us here today who will now introduce themselves. Hi, uh, I'm Saga and I'm originally from Sweden. I currently study in England. I study songwriting, but I'm also a producer. Hi all, I'm Ko. I'm currently a junior at Clive and that's in New York. I'm in New York. Um, I'm a singer songwriter, definitely improving on my production and an artist. Hi, I'm Miranda. I'm from Miami, but right now I'm a sophomore at the Clive Davis Institute. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and I'm so happy to be here. Hi, uh, I'm Miriam. Um, I am an artist, producer, and songwriter from Sweden, and I am currently in Sweden. And I'm also super stoked to be here. Hi, my name is my is Shadi and uh, I'm a producer and songwriter and artist from Gothenburg, Sweden. And yeah, that's where I'm at and where I'm working. Hi, I'm Tony. Um, I'm a producer, singer, songwriter, artist from Chile, but I'm currently uh, studying at Clive Davis. I'm a junior and I live in New York now. And thank you for inviting me to this panel. I'm excited. Thank you everyone for being here. So let's just get started. Um, the first question is, when was the first time that you realized that there was a gender inequity in music and how did it reveal itself to you? I, I think in general, it was never surprising because obviously you grow up with a patriarchal influence throughout your entire life. So it's not surprising that happens in the music industry as well because it happens everywhere. But I think the first thing that really got to me was seeing how few uh, producers and songwriters are women or not men. Um, and just like, because I grew up with having women around me in music. So I just, just not knowing where the drop off point is. It's like, where do all these women disappear? Like, where do they get pushed off? Because obviously, that's when we introduce ourselves. We all said that we do production or that we want to do production. But then why are there not more female producers? Because there are female producers. It's just why are they not getting hired? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I think actually, like, when I started, um, how I realized it was um, actually through others. Like, because I, uh, when I started, it was only because 
you know, I loved creating music and I, I just started like in the basement, I started producing and started writing. And then it was actually with interaction with others that I realized that how un unusual it is because they were like, oh, that must be, that must be so like, uh, rare to be a, a woman producer or so, so I kind of learned through others um, but otherwise for, for me personally and I, I don't know if uh, a lot of people have that the same experience but like because um, because I like to produce I've kind of not had that much interaction with the music business actually because I, I work mostly by myself and I think also that was why I wanted to produce because I knew that I wanted to spare myself um, those studio situations that I've heard of. Um, so yeah, but um, that was maybe my first interaction with um, realizing the gender inequality in the business. I think for me it was, um um when I was in music competitions with my old band and we were kind of we were like really reckless and I was like super tomboy didn't know it then but like grew up very with like very like my parents didn't treat me as a girl and my brother as a boy it was very like gender neutral which I am so thankful for today but I didn't like realize what feminism even was until quite late and I was in a music competition with my girlfriend we were in it together and we won and it was like a pretty big deal then for like two 17 year olds. And um, it was like the bands were in the finals were like 95% males. Like there were no women. And then when we won, it was such a big deal. And we got so much hate that the organizers had to make like a press statement to like defend why we want, like, to be fair, we, we had like provocative lyrics, but we were, we were still like, that couldn't have been like the main thing. That was the first time where I was like, okay, this is like, I felt the hate, you know? Definitely, that's, that's a really crazy story. Um, yeah, so since you guys have started in the business, do you think that there's been a shift in the per uh, perception of women's artistry? And if so, what does that look like to you? Um, one thing that I can think about is like in general, I feel like more uh, artists uh, and creators are are taking control over their work, uh, like more DIY artists are coming forth and um, there is, uh, it's, it's much easier now for, for more people to, to do it themselves, so they don't need that uh, big of a team around them. Um, so, and I guess that shift applies to both men and women. So um, that is a shift I think um, has happened. And uh, also maybe like the, um, a, a shift in how women are allowed to um, express their artistry, like being more of a complex character and um, having, uh, having, yeah, uh, more nuances to their to their image um, and actually honestly I, I think that also social media has helped in this in some ways because they can express more of their everyday life and it's more allowed to show uh, all sides of themselves um, yeah that's some some points on it yeah because I was thinking about that as well how it's I mean, it's still like that to an extent, but how before it was like either a female artist is sexy or family friendly. And those are the two options. And it's like, you couldn't exist in between. So it was like, when you had done something scandalous, it was like, oh, you will never come back. I'll never let my children listen to you again. Or it was like, if someone from the innocent side, like for example, Miley Cyrus, when she started doing whatever she wanted to do, everyone was like, no, you're supposed to be innocent. You can't step out of that innocent little box. And then they wanted to move her to the sexy box. So there wasn't like any space in between, but I feel like now women are really pushing to like be able to express themselves on that spectrum and outside of it as the main thing and not just be about how they are perceived as sexual objects and just make their artistry and push for the artistry to be about and be perceived about more than that. 
I really yeah, exactly. Oh, sorry. Um, I resonated with uh, what Saga had said earlier about sort of like where the drop off is because like we all talked about production and this is something I've seen like in I guess not just music like I see this in school like just so many women around me working hard and excelling in classes in education like in workplaces but then we look at like the highest levels of success in terms of like access and this is like the epitome of the glass ceiling like there are so many women who are working hard, who are talented, who do have the skills and the energy to drive, but it is like what access is given. And like, I think something, so we talked about this one of my classes that like Spotify is literally like misogynistic and racist in that if you look at a man's, like a male artist's, like artists also like, it's like all men. And if you look at a woman's artist also like, it's like half men and half women. And like, just there's such, there's so many odds stacked against us, even though there are infinite, infinite women making amazing work. And like the hierarchy is just so, or not the hierarchy, the shift, I guess. Like, so the perception of women, like there's so many odds stacked against us that we don't even see. Oh my God, that's so true. (laughs) And also, like uh, what you said about Spotify, like the uh, the what is it called like um, similar artists also. Um, it's uh, I realized myself that that is that is like a thing I, I when when I saw that all, all my similar artists um, were women and I was like, that cannot be the only thing we have in common like because it was different genres and it would be some male artists that were actually more close but it's like and then when I now I've started getting a lot of similar artists that are like male uh, or men Uh, and and I realized like in myself I was like am I feeling like is is this a good thing you know oh we can play in that league too so it's like yeah it's really it's really weird that's just creating like even a further gap. I was. But gonna... I... Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. I was just gonna say to like add something positive to the conversation. Uh, I've seen, um, like I don't know how it is in the U.S., but in Sweden, there's a lot more. Like I just studied. At, I did a go a, a music production course that was so solely for um, women and non-binary people and trans people, and then I studied at another music production course, which was. They, they decided to have 50 50. Um, and that was like a criteria for the classes. So that was something positive. Yeah, I was going to say, um, like what Shadi was talking about social media, how I feel like that has played a positive role. But at the same time, like I, I've realized how much more women have to prove themselves. To, for like people to believe that they're actually doing what they're doing when men is with men it's just assumed like for example like Taylor Swift documentary came out and there were so many people telling me like oh my god like she writes her own songs like what or like she has like input in the production like and I, for me that was so like obvious I was like yeah like why is why are people so surprised or like when people started watching videos of Beyonce and how much control she has over her like how she's like such a boss in her business people just can't believe it and i feel like with social media now we're seeing it but at the same time i'm like so upset about the having have to do that like we have to do that because if not no one knows or and no one assumes you know what i mean like you have to say you're a producer and because if not no one will think you are you know just by default yeah, something that I was gonna say actually is I feel like um, thinking about the, what the music industry looked like when I was like eight years old versus now, I think a lot more of the female artists, especially in pop and like on the charts are writing their own songs. And I feel like um, Taylor Swift, like having one of the biggest pop stars in the world, like be a writer on all of her songs was really helpful in that. And I think encourage a lot of the younger generations that are now like on the radio to also write their own songs. But um but what Tony was saying is so true. I feel like we we have to like take a picture of us in the studio, like with our hand on the console for people to think that we're actually a part of the creative process like that. And even if you post that picture, it's like people are assuming that you're just like posting for the picture 
or it's like you say you're a producer and they go like do you use garage band like it's just assumed that it's yeah, you're a producer, but you're probably really bad at it. Or you're a songwriter, but you probably don't even write about deep stuff. Or you just write stupid songs about boys. It's like, no matter how much you prove yourself, until you literally go, here is my Grammy. Everyone goes like, nah, you can't really do that, can you? You know what? Oh, sorry. One of my friends once told me, I was like, sort of just starting to get into production. And I was like, but I'm not a producer. And she was like, girl, like, boys in sixth grade who like make one loop say that they're a producer on garage band so like you can call yourself a producer you should call yourself a producer and I was like you're so right there are like 12 year olds who like make a trap beat and they're like yeah I'm a producer so that's the confidence I try to embody these days um Ko you mentioned something really interesting about uh interesting about bringing up the word hierarchy and one thing that I would like to ask you guys if you think that there's a hierarchy among women in the industry obviously there's a hierarchy uh, a gender hierarchy but is there a hierarchy within women and if so how can we make it constructive rather than competitive or if you don't think that there's a hierarchy then why and etc I think the reason why um we think or 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 that maybe there is I, I'm not sure if the answer is a yes or no answer I don't think it is I think it's more gray but that rather than black and white but I think there has been a misconception that there's like not enough space for like badass women like there can only be a one big pop star at the moment there can only be you know but then you have like in the 60s you had all these male rock stars and there was like so many of them you know and why why does there have to be one at like one pop star thriving why can't there be like 20 or 100 or a thousand you know what I mean like there's this misconception that we have to fight for a spot because it's so hard I think for people to like believe and understand the work that a woman can put and the control that she can have like with her music and her business that that's why we think there's like little space but that's not the reality we just have to change that like cultural misconception yeah I think um it's not a hierarchy that we place amongst ourselves. Like I know there's this whole narrative of like women, like we're like all against each other. And I don't really think that that's the case, but I do think that there are other factors like race, colorism, um, like homophobia, transphobia that give different women different levels of access, you know? So there definitely are women with like, while we're all affected by misogyny, there are women that are way more affected by it because of those factors. Definitely. I and definitely also, agree. Oh, sorry. Continue. Sorry. And I also feel like by upkeeping the myth that it's like, oh, there's only like one woman at the time. It's kind of like a way for the patriarchy to disencourage women to try to move forward. And especially um, there's this isn't um, who said it before. I think Tony mentioned it, but that there's this entire misconception that it's like that women hate each other or that we're super cat, uh, like catty towards each other or that, oh, I don't have, I don't have girlfriends. I only have boyfriends because girls are so dramatic. Um, and I feel like that's just applied into a workplace scenario by saying women are just competitive towards each other. And I haven't seen that. I think every, every woman I worked with have been very uplifting. Um, and I hope it's not like true on like a higher level, but I don't think it is. I don't think that there's, a competitive hierarchy amongst women because I think we are all quite tired of being pushed down just because we are women. Yeah, I have definitely experienced. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just I was just gonna say I've definitely experienced that, like for sure, with uh, but basically just one other person. But um, I think that's what we're all saying. The patriarchy wants us to compete. They want to put us against each other. They want to say that there can only be one. That's why they're putting like Cardi B and Nicki Minaj like against each other as if there's not space for both of them, as if they're making the exact same type of music. And it's just ridiculous. But we we just have to like back each other. And and because at the end of the day, if 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 you win, I win, and vice versa. Yeah. yeah, and I was just going to say that like I totally agree with what all of you said, and it's like um 
it's it's like the patriarchal structures and walls that are built around women are actually is would be the only reason to why that is because like i feel um myself that i've i've seen this shift when it comes to um like i i've i've noticed from own experience that it's not women like in themselves that want that because like in separatistic um spaces it's like the the love support um professionality um you know the strength that is there there's like it it really blows my mind every time it's like the most strengthening space i've ever been in and it's like um when i when i go out of those uh, sessions it's just i bring so much with me so you know it's just um yeah it's really not not a thing like uh, we yeah we wouldn't um it wouldn't be that way if it wasn't because of the actual patriarchal structures around women yeah um agreed on all fronts as well um it so another question for you guys is that um, it is no secret that there's been many sexual exploits of women in the industry. And regardless of whether or not you've personally experienced this, how does that affect you? We talked about like the walls that the patriarchy builds around women, but what about the, the weight of that trauma, even if you haven't personally experienced it, knowing that other women are really hold into these situations? How does it affect you as a creative, as your mental health? And have you seen changes that have been effective or not effective? And how can we improve upon them? I think there are a lot of, uh, this is sort of to the point that Miranda brought up earlier and that like intersectionality exists and there are other forms of oppression. But I think like I have been feeling really frustrated lately or like just in my life have felt this frustration of, I don't wanna have to think about how am I, I'm perceived, my identity, for what reason someone's talking to me, for what reason someone wants to work with me. Like my dream would just be able to like exist <laughs> and not have to, feel the weight of my many identities on me at all times and I think that plays out in music when I'm in a room or I'm, I'm meeting someone and I kind of have to suss out like why they're talking to me whether that be like they want to write for me or they think that they can do something for me or if they genuinely are interested in like what I have going on and I think it, it often sort of like surprises me when someone's like hey I, I really like your writing like I want you to contribute to this I'm like oh that that's so rare for me to hear. Maybe I'm just jaded and I, and I assume that that's not, that's not what I'm going to hear. But I think like, it's like the weight of that all the time. And I imagine like the great art I could be making instead of like having the weight of my identity on me at all times. Uh, I think like, I feel that the heaviest. I think I really wish it wasn't like this, but when I step into a room with a man, I am, really conscious of like what am I wearing what am I wearing that day what do I look like what am I saying like I want to make sure that everything I'm saying sounds super professional and friendly and cannot be interpreted in any sort of like risque way I you know I write a lot of songs about love and like sex positivity and that's a really and also like feminism and those are really important to me but I feel like when I'm in a room with a guy especially if it's not someone that I've like I'm friends with before the session, I kind of have to figure out like, is this something that they're gonna be okay with? Like, are they gonna misinterpret this or take it as some sort of invitation? Um, and when I'm writing with women, that's just not on my mind, you know what I mean? So how can we disseminate information about these issues to young women just entering the industry and to the perpetrators as well? What is a way that we can really just make everyone aware of this knowledge? that these issues are happening, that intersectionality is really important? I think for me, um, the way that I sort of, I mean, like I think um, Saga was saying earlier, there was never a point in my life where like, I didn't know that like the patriarchy existed or that sexism was happening in the music industry. But the way that I like became even more passionate about like making things better and stuff was listening to women, like listening to female writers and female producers and like hearing them tell their side of the story and talk about it in interviews really openly. So I feel like um, as songwriters and producers, 
we can talk about it openly and have conversations like this but I also think it's really important for men like younger boys to be listening to more women because if your playlist is 90 percent men you're not going to hear about the feminism or anything that's happening to women at all and you shouldn't be hearing about our story told through the lens of somebody that's not living it I think it's like, why is it a guilty pleasure for men to like Dua Lipa? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I've heard that so many times. Like, it's like, yeah, I actually like listen to Dua Lipa, but like, don't tell my friends. Like, why? Like, she's so fire. Like, that, that's a, that's a flex to me that you like Dua Lipa. Like, that just makes you more like fun and like attractive or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, why is it? I don't know. It's just like, so it's the same thing when people go like, because pop music is very associated with young girls. And they're like, oh no, I don't listen to pop music. That's like not good music. And it's like, why do you think it's not good music? Is it because it's associated with teenage girls? Probably. Um, also there's this study, I don't remember the numbers or anything uh, specific about it, but I remember what it kind of said. Um, it was in a room where it was 50% men, men and 50% women and the men had to start saying when they thought that the women spoke the majority of the time. And the men thought that the women spoke the majority of the time when it was like, they spoke 30% of the time or something. It was something like, so they thought that women took up a lot more space than they actually did. Just because they are so used to wanting, I don't know why they are used to wanting the majority, but you get it's what like I mean. The but they assume that women take up such a large space when it's like this much. Mm. It's like the like uh, hysterical woman, like you're a maniac if you have like show any emotions. And it's kind of like you were saying before about how a female artist can either be sexy or, or was it sexy or family friendly? Like there's no, there's no real, <laughs> we're not real humans. One way I've been trying to like preach the gospel, I guess, is like now that I'm older in school, I guess, like, I love talking to underclassmen and like just like younger girls in the program like I've talked to a number of like freshmen which are only two years younger than me but like I feel like I've already had a lot of lived experiences with my time at music school that I've learned a lot from especially when like going into collaborations with people that I'm friends with but also need to be professional with and like sharing like what Miranda's saying like sharing our experiences and like being open about the things that are happening and how we how we deal with them like I had a freshman ask me like hey I've been going to sessions with men and like how can I sort of stand my ground I feel like they don't always listen to me and I was like and I literally told her like step one don't work with men step two um yeah I told her like I gave her the advice that I've had and I was like yeah and I've had sessions that didn't go well and like I've learned that learned these rules or like learned these uh tips from experience so trying to just share as much knowledge and I think this is sort of along the lines of maybe what song or a lot of people echoed, but like putting energy into uplifting other women and other artists, like at the same level of us and just like all coming up together because there is space for everyone. And if we make it so, it will become true. I think this is like super, um, what I'm gonna say is like very simple and can be like, duh, but like, honestly, for me, it's like the solution to like everything that's wrong in the world. Like simply like educating, education, put it in the curriculum since you're like little, you know, like education and representation are two like such important subjects that are like not just subjects, like concepts that are so like overlooked, I think. Like there's this um there's this uh channel on YouTube that's like okay, there's like diary of a song and then th there's this other one that's like the making of and then they put a track. And I got like super obsessed with it. And then I like started hating it because I realized there was not a single video with a woman producer, not a single one. There's like, there was like 35 videos on this channel. And this is like people, like people from the industry, as well as like people that like us, like people that are in school for music, they look at these videos for fun, you know, and also to learn like, oh my God, what plugins are they using? And then when you don't see any woman, like obviously you think, you, you you don't believe that you are you can be a producer because you don't see anyone like you being a producer like you know it's like such a like I remember people having to convince and Ko talked about it as well like people having to convince 
me that I was a producer when I was already, like, why? Like, why, why do I have to, like, convince myself of something I'm already doing and have been doing for such a long time? And it's like, oh, because I've never seen anyone, I've never seen this. I didn't know this was, like, a thing. I didn't know, like, women were producers till I got to Clive. Like, that's the truth of my story, at least. And so that's just because I was never educated on the role that women could have and have in the music industry. So uh, on that note, many, if not all, the panelists pr partic participated in the cloud sessions, Women's Voices. So what was it like collaborating in an all-woman environment as opposed to a co-ed environment? I think for me, it just felt safe. Like, I didn't have to think about how they were perceiving me, like Ko was saying. Like, I wasn't worrying about proving to them that I deserve to be there. Like, we, and I feel like the other person was coming to the room with that same energy, and we were both just focusing on the art. We were like, how can we make the best song? That was the only thing on our minds. And just like when you don't work with men, so you work with with women and people that are perceived as women, it's like you take away this entire thing where it's like you feel like you have to prove yourself before you are respected. So you have to skip the entire like first like hour where it's like you have to have all good ideas to make sure that they like go like, okay, I guess this one knows what it's doing. <laughs> and, and you immediately go to, okay, let's get to work. So you miss that first wasted hour of just being like, yeah, I deserve to be here. I didn't participate in the women's voices, but I um, I can share from when I I had a crazy experience where I played at a festival, which was a separatist festival for all women and trans people called Statement in Gothenburg. And that was like, it was a big festival and it was only females and trans people. And uh, we were playing at this nightclub and that was just like, so strange like the sound technician was like the nicest person ever. And like, I was like, do you want any help? I like, even I was being nice to them, which I never would have been if, if it was a man, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but that was like, and it was so, it was like, it was wild because everyone was going crazy in the audience, but it wasn't like rowdy, you know, like it was lit, but it wasn't like that. It, nobody was like touching anybody inappropriately or whatever. So yeah, that's not really answer to the question, but. I think having participated in both cloud sessions, I guess, like not to flame the boys, love them, but <laughs> I, and I think just like sort of the, the genres and certain energies that some people had in the first sessions, like there were a lot more people who were like collaborating in similar genres and like just some of the like you just like more rap hip hop songs coming out of the first cloud sessions. Like it seemed like they all, maybe this was just like my own insecurity and like my lack of confidence, but it seemed like they all were like really vibing. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't know what I'm really supposed to do is like this sort of like alt R and B like pop writer when everyone's just making like trap beats, like, or like they're putting a rap verse on my song. Like, I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me. Whereas like, I think there was still a huge variety of genre in the March, the Women's Voices cloud sessions, but I felt like it just like, it made more sense and I didn't feel like I was out of place. Maybe that's speaking to sort of what I was talking about before in terms of like the weight of my identity, but I, yeah, I felt comfortable and like I had a place more in an all women's or like non-men space. And on that note, what was it like to virtually collaborate across borders from Sweden and the U.S., especially during a pandemic, which uh, or when physical collab collaborations have been really limited? Does anyone want to speak on their experience collaborating virtually? Well, I can, but I just I just spoke, so I feel you know I'm getting that thing that everyone gets when they talk too much. Um, you go ahead, go. Top four. Go, 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 go. I I feel like this year I've spent a lot of time like apart from the cloud sessions, just exploring international 
things. Like I've been listening to a lot of K-pop this year. I've been like watching Netflix shows in languages that I don't personally speak with subtitles. Like I just think that one sort of side effect of this year with so many things being virtual is like truly being able to connect with people across the globe and people will be more willing to connect. Like because literally everyone was at home like, well, very, depending on the country you're in uh, for certain times of the year. But yeah, I think it was really, really special to be able to connect to people and just know that, that we like don't, this is so cliche, but like we have more in common than we think. And like, it's been really cool. Like now to have participated in both the cloud sessions, like I, I like now I have a network in Sweden and like, I've never been to Sweden, but I would like love to visit and co-write in person when I'm next able to. And I, yeah, like making connections is something that's really important to me. And it's been really amazing to be able to do that within these circumstances. So what can men do to help facilitate a safer space for everyone? We talked about what women can do and how we uplift each other and are there for each other. But what can men do? Um, frankly, just shut up a bit. Like, just like... Can you just like listen to what I'm saying to you? Because that's my biggest pet peeve when you're in sessions that you say something and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, you say it later and they're like, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, you say it again. And then they go, oh, you meant like this. And it's like, no, I didn't mean like that. I meant it like that, fix it, do it. And they're like, ah, oh, okay. Um, it's like, I've been trying to tell you this four times. It's like, I don't, <laughs> hmm, I don't understand why you're not listening to me. <laughs> It's like what I'm saying is important. Listen to me, please. I know what I'm doing. So I think that's the like the biggest thing is like, don't think you're better than me because you might not be. So take me seriously, please. Yeah, for sure. And adding to what you said, Saga, like I love that. Both shutting up and also speaking up, like, um, knowing knowing when when you're needed uh, so like to quote you know benjamin benjamin franklin like justice will not be served until those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are like we, it, change needs to come from everywhere and everyone um now it's very um you know you see people speaking up but it's it's the it's the group that are affected oftentimes. And if it's not, it's like a one man speaks up and he's like a hero and then he becomes like uh, narcissistic and you, you lost him. So it's like, um, yeah, it's just, also I think everyone needs to realize that, um, that this is not, this is not just to be nice to one group of people. Like this is also because of, like the music industry needs all is, is a lot of talent that is like being pretty much wasted because um they don't see their place um in the industry they don't feel welcome so like if you really care about music you need to facilitate that space also um yeah i saw this I'll... sorry sorry, sorry go ahead i saw this tiktok recently where um, this girl was saying that she's not a feminist because she's worried about women. She's a feminist because she's worried about men. And I think that kind of applies, like, especially like in the cloud sessions, we see that when we put women in a room together, like we're quite kind to each other. And we um, have like had to work so hard to be able to do so little that like when, like we're like overprepared, I guess. And we're like having to overachieve. But then when you put, men in a room together a men in a room with women you see all of these like nasty things happening and why is that happening i think as a man like what you should be doing right now is like questioning yourself and everything like why am i only listening to three women and why do i feel guilty telling my men about my boy like friends that are boys about that or why am i putting down somebody else to make myself feel better like if that's where my source of self-worth is coming from then that's troubling and i need to do some like some healing you know yeah and it's just with when it comes to like feminist aspects in general when people think of equality they think that women should be the same as men and it's like i don't want to be 
like a man. I don't think they're having a good time either. And it's just like feminine qualities are so like feared and looked down upon. It's like to achieve equality, women must stop being women and start acting like men. Um, like for example, a lot of women when they send emails are like exclamation mark, thank you so much for taking your time. And a lot of people are interpreting that as obviously that can be interpreted as a woman not feeling important enough to demand things. But that can also be interpreted as a woman wanting to be nice. And that's how they friendly communicate. Like, for example, when we accidentally interrupt each other, we're like, oh, sorry, which turn is it? Is it you? Is it me? And I don't feel like, obviously, we'd have to put the same people and also in a parallel universe when we were all cis men. But I don't think if that was the case, that we would be, sorry, 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 your turn. It's more like, oh. Mm. And I think that just like when it comes to equality, it's just like, men needs to be more like women and women need some more aspects that men do it's like we got to be in the middle we can't just all come up like that and i think yeah so just my anyway my tip to men is to stop fearing feminine qualities they're not bad they're quite good you should try them can i just I add love that that's like yeah i think there's such a misunderstanding about like feminine and male energy and feminine energy like a lot of men think that that's about codependency or weakness or whatever, where it's really the opposite. And uh, I think what you said is so true. And also just to add that like men should also stop assuming their place. Like I'm not gonna assume that you're a producer just because you're a man. So you can stop assuming that position just because you're in a session with a female. We can talk about it the first thing we do. So we're actually on our last question, um, which is really exciting and sad because this has been incredible and you guys all have really incredible things to bring to the table. Um, thank you again for being here and for participating. So our last question is, how do you see music evolving over the next 20 years? Um, maybe a little bit like I was mentioning before, for um, more DIY musicians um, and uh, you know more artists taking control over their own work uh, I think we will only see more and more of that and 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 seeing more yeah more women non-binary uh, transgender people in um, higher position jobs like I, I think we will we'll see that like um, we're all finding our way and I think both sides are seeing that they need each other. And uh, just like Saga said that, um, you know, we, we need a little bit of, of um, everyone's like qualities. Um, they're all like all um, very valuable and beautiful. And um, yeah, I think we will find more of that come into balance in that way also. So. And um, I also feel like, like white straight men are just running out of things to say and things to do. And I feel like if we include the rest of us, that's like the majority of the population is not a, a white straight cis man. Um, there's just going to be so much creativity and so many new ideas and so many new suggestions. Like, for, like when you look at fem like some female artists, it's just like, this is so like creative. And just like when you see like those people that have been like super marginalized and now suddenly it's like they're getting this like slight push and it's just like wow okay this is so cool this would never have happened if you weren't let like being allowed to like go to the front um like for example like uh rina sabayama like her latest album she just like she was just like okay let me have a metal track in there i don't care like this is just what i want to do and it's just like to just go from like that, like really poppy, I want to do this to like, oh, I want to talk about this to being like, I'm angry. I want a song that sounds like metal and I want it to be angry. I'm going to do that and just be like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And just being like, I think a lot of people that come from more like minorities and oppressed groups is more willing to be like, I don't like labels because we know what it's like to be in a box all the time. So it's like, OK, in my music, I'm not going to be in a box. I'm going to do whatever I want and it's going to be great. So I think, anyway, I think music's gonna be cool. Yeah, I'm honestly super hopeful, like 
just like with 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 what we're doing right now like just having have had this opportunity and this space and like being able to openly talk about these things and like we're all like young so in 10 years we're gonna still be doing the same thing and if you know if we're, we're talking about this now then we're gonna still be talking about it later but hopefully putting more people into practice you know and having more conversations about it and I, I think like I'm already seeing a lot more women instrumentalists um now than I was 10 years ago like I remember very vividly um it's much more common now I mean it's it it should have always been because I've always known of it but it's being much more public you know and in bands and having all women bands like that's that's more of a thing now um and so I'm I'm pretty hopeful that in 20 years this conversation I think it's gonna be a long ride but it's already a ride you know we're already in in it so yeah I feel like right now um not just like with like gender inequality but with like Black Lives Matter and like a lot of other issues a lot of big labels and big companies are coming out and saying like oh we support you know marginalized oppressed people like we want to push you to the front and I feel like I don't know if you guys feel this way but I'm definitely I don't know like sometimes when they do it it feels more like they're trying to fill a quota and have like a token like Latina girl on the record or something just to say that they're woke and it's not coming from a genuine place so I feel like hopefully in 20 years they're putting more women in studios and putting more women like highlighting us more and highlighting women of all shades and um and sexual orientations not just because they want to fill a quota but because they genuinely they like see our worth like for our talent for like what we're bringing to the table at, just as creatives and as people i would love to i get i love that you brought up quotas uh i think i said this in so it's something i like to say so i'm gonna say it again like instead of spaces that like are historically unsafe for marginalized people then suddenly being like well we have to put like a black person on our board now like reevaluate and this is sort of just on this point as well being like men need and like i think someone else brought this up we've all said lots of good things but like these institutions and groups should be questioning why people like why women people of color non-binary people differently able people don't feel comfortable working there or existing there in the first place like why why is your company only cis straight white guys if you just throw some women in there it's not going to make it better and so I think in 10 20 years like out of necessity there will just be more spaces that are new like I think so many big corporations are trying to sort of do this like Re re not regressive like trying to work backwards and like fix all the problems that they exist that exist within the companies but I think moving forward just like new spaces and new communities are going to be started that hopefully from the start are talking about these things men won't have to later I mean and then later fixed other problems that they have but I think more just like spaces that are safe from the start will be created thank you guys again for participating in the cloud sessions women in music panel and thank you again to the embassy of sweden in washington dc and to the consul general of sweden in new york for making this happen um i guess we're signing off now so thank you everybody thanks for watching thank, thank, thank you so much you. My name is Sineda and welcome to my studio. I'm an artist, producer, and music technologist originally from Toronto, Canada, but I'm currently based in New York City. I'm actually studying at the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music at NYU, and I was a part of the Cloud Sessions Women's Voices this past March. During the Cloud Sessions, I had the opportunity to work with and meet so many incredible artists songwriters and producers from New York and Sweden and collaborate with them on various songs. There was one song in particular that I fell in love with and it was written by me, Sarah Manka, and Rebecca aka Reindeer. During our first session working together we hadn't really met each other or worked with each other before but we really quickly jumped into it and since we were all producers we decided that we would try out different things by sending the file to each of us and we would each add something unique. 
So we started off with a really simple chord progression of F minor, E flat, C minor, and D flat. And then after that, we added our own ideas and we came up with different lyric ideas. And eventually, we came up with this song that you're about to hear. The working title is Chasing Dreams, and it's about trying to reach your goals and pursuing your dreams and your passions. This song is really special to me because as a female Asian producer, there aren't a lot of people who look like me in the music industry, and I would really like to inspire the next generation of young women producers and show them that they have a place in this industry and that it's so important for women's voices to be heard. So without further ado, this is Chasing Dreams by Reindeer, Menka, and Shineda, featuring Jay Wald. Hey. Yeah. Uh. It took me some time to finally get to this point. That I finally feel good. Been crashing for a long time. Looks like I'm smudging it in your eyes. Been on the end of every road. Won't stop before I crack the code. Gonna try to find. In the mirror, I'm feeling better. Finally getting my shit together. Finally feeling like I'm a king and I'm steady living my dream. I ain't worried about them days I was fed up because of my head up. That's a fact. I was down bad, had to get up in my bag. Had to slow down, I was moving too fast. My girl told me chill, had to go on relax. Now I'm back on the stage and I'm back in the raps. I just go on attack. My main goal is put the bay on the map. See, these days I've been feeling my best. Had to change up my ways, now your boy feeling blessed. Yes. Had to go up and get it I'm up now and I'm finally lifted I feel good, got a whole different spirit I'm chasing my dreams and I'm after my vision Hi everyone, I'm Pauline. I'm a singer, songwriter, play some instruments as well, and I represent Sweden in the Cloud Sessions Women's Edition. So um, the experience for me was super um, educating. I learned a lot about working with total strangers, which I should do more often because it's so much fun, but also in terms of working over the internet, which I find is super difficult sometimes but it's such a great skill to have especially in this industry and especially during these times uh, so i'm so grateful that i got to practice that during these weeks and also i got to practice my english which is um, much needed the song you hear in this video is a song that i worked on with emma rose who is a great 
producer, singer, songwriter, pianist too, I think. She does it all, I mean. And then Nalia, who is an amazing, soulful R&B type singer, songwriter. And working with them was so much fun. Um, and even just chatting with them and get to know them and talking about like the differences between the US and Sweden. It was a lot of fun and in terms of the working process, it was not what I expected really, because I thought we were going to have our initial roles, like your singer, your producer, your writer, but we just like threw ideas at each other and uh, whoever came up with what did not matter. And I really liked that it felt free um, and a good creative way of working in a really non-creative uh, setting which uh, I guess was the best thing we could do. But yeah, I hope we can finish the song. Uh, I think it sounds great. What I also hope for the future is just having more women in terms of everything, like uh, having a whole team of women working on a song um, and that not being something unique or special, just being like, normal, as normal as a whole group of men working on a song. Because women are able, women are so capable of creating great music. We just need the space and the opportunities uh, to show what we got. So um, yeah, thank you for listening. Um, I hope you liked the song and um, that's it. So summer long Don't text, don't call I'm unavailable I you taking out that other girl Don't text, don't call I'm My name is Sarah Shankar and I'm a producer songwriter from the Clive Davis Institute. I was also an alumni leader during the Cloud Sessions Women's Voices and I made a super cool song with Bichette and Lorena called New York Weather. So I'm going to share with you guys a little demo snippet of it and then talk a little bit about the experience and process behind it. So let's go! Feels like I'm caving in and out of this pressure Young, dumb, and thinking it'll only get better Trying to frame your life in another life Young, dumb, and thinking it'll only get better Faded ripped blue jeans staring at the seams Blowing smoke on me and you call me pretty Is it supposed to feel like a fever dream With your lips on me, I think how insincere You say you want me, you say you need me You only call me late in the evening Give me a sweatshirt like it's whatever You keep on changing So, um, basically Lorena, Bishat, and I, we got on a Zoom call together and we wrote it in a couple hours. It came together pretty fast. Like, we worked together really well. And um, I think the idea, like New York weather, the title came from like whenever Lorena was talking about the weather in New York. And she was like, yeah, like one day it's 36 degrees and the next day it's 80 degrees. Like there is no in between. Like it's just always changing and I don't know what to do. I don't know what to wear. And so we kind of all related that to our like 
experiences dating guys being with boys <laughs> and um yeah like getting mixed signals like the confusion sometimes like yeah I think musically a lot of the musical inspiration behind this song came from 2000s early girl pop stuff um I am a huge pop fanatic and I listen to Katy Perry Taylor Swift Avril Lavigne 2000s stuff on repeat every day all day and so um yeah I think you can hear that in the song um it has a lot of that 2000s early girl pop influence on it and yeah I love it so um after we wrote it, Lorena and I, we both went to the studio and I recorded her vocals on it. So that was her singing, incredible vocals. And um, yeah, like I just mixed like a little demo. I put down a guitar loop, uh, put down like a drum beat and a bass on it. A really awesome producer friend of mine once told me that like in a production, in a full production, there are always like three or four elements to the song that if the song was only those three or four elements, the song would stand on its feet. And so, um, yeah, like whenever I produce demos, I try to put down like three instruments that I feel like are the make it or break it instruments and then make a demo out of that and then like layer more instruments on it later. So right now this song, what you just heard is kind of in the demo phase. And yeah, like I'm gonna be working on adding some more instruments to it, beefing it up, you know, that kind of great stuff. Um, I'm really happy like overall with the process of this song like I feel like we work together well and I also feel like I was able to be like really vulnerable about my experiences and just throw my ideas out instead of being like you know this might be really crazy but what if we did this like I would just be like hey why don't we try doing this like and then everyone was super open-minded in the session which I really really appreciated and so um yeah, I'm really happy with how this song turned out. So big shout out and thank you to Lorena and Bishat for that. And of course, the Cloud Sessions Women's Voices, because without that, we probably would have never written this song. So <laughs> thank you to everyone involved. <laughs> I always see music industry stats floating around Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook about the percentage of women artists, songwriters, and producers, and it's so shockingly low. Like, 2% of producers are women, which is not even close to 50%. So for the future of the music industry, I really hope that there is more gender balance. Um... Yeah, I always wonder why we are leaving out this huge pool of talent. Why are we not championing more women to be artists, producers, and songwriters? Why are we not promoting their music? Um, I think there are a lot of girls out there who want to see themselves in the songs that they listen to. And that's a lot of people. That's a huge demographic. So... Um, yeah, in the future, I want to see number one songs written, produced, and sung by women. Uh, as a producer, what inspires me to keep producing is the fact that there are amazing women out there. Not too many of them, but amazing women producers are there right now, like Alex Hope, Alex Klein, Liar, The Tramp Stamps. And whenever I see them doing it and doing their job incredibly well, I'm just like, oh yeah, this is something I can do. This is definitely something like in my ballpark, in my league. So yeah, I think it's really important that we champion more women. So go women. <laughs> Gerd. I am a Swedish singer-songwriter, uh, currently based in Stockholm, and I was a part of the Cloud Sessions. Um, together with Miranda, I made this song. Um, it was really just a simple melody. Uh, I played it on the piano, I hummed a little bit of the verse, and then Miranda thought that was really cool. And she had this idea of like introducing a relationship where in the beginning of the song you're very much in love and then in the end of the song you're not that much in love anymore but you're still spending all of this time together you're still giving a part of your youth away to someone else by sharing all that time together 
And that is really what the song is about. And um, I would just like to say to everyone that uh, being a part of a female songwriting camp can be really rewarding in getting to know other females in the industry. Uh, and it's just really cool to see how other girls are making it out there. Um, and uh, for you who are not female, <laughs> I would just love to encourage you to try to collaborate more with women around you. Because we are amazing. Um, and um, yeah, that's really all I got. I hope that you enjoy the song. And, and um, I hope you enjoy your evening. Bye! First thing that I think about Only thing I'm dreaming of is that okay If we spend some time together Even if it's not forever I'd be okay Cause I been giving all my youth away And you'll be the one I give it to Sleeping in your arms like everything could go right And nothing ever felt this easy And even in the middle of the night You don't walk away until we worked it out So I And you'll be the one I give it to Sleeping in your arms like everything could go right And nothing ever felt this easy And even in the middle of the night You don't walk away until we worked it out So I've been giving all my youth away And you First thing that I think about, only thing I'm dreaming of is that okay? <laughs>